Hello, everybody. Happy Tuesday. Welcome to our Tuesday day early, spoiler free comic review show. That's a lot, a lot to spit <laughs> out there. We just read a boatload of comics. Yeah. I mean, I think I got like 11 or so I'm going over and that's about half of them. Yeah, I, I, I wish I got to dig even deeper into some of them, but I feel like I got I got the general idea of some of them. Well, we're happy that all of you get to join us a day early, get to hear our thoughts on these comics. What the video is, is we are in Fanny Flocks, we store in Chattanooga, Tennessee. I'm Jason. I'm Andy. And every week we sit down, we read the comics early, and we tell you about them. We'll, we'll tell you the important things, like if there's a first appearance, mm -hmm. major death, but we don't spoil the whole book. We tell you the premise, we tell you why you might want a book or who might like a book. What we, th what we think of it. That's generally how mm -hmm. the show goes. So we got a plenty of comics to go over today. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Andy <laughs> to go ahead and yeah, you, it's you, funny. You take Usually the first it's one. like we, you have your books, I have my books, but we've kind of, you know, if one of yours is interesting, like if I have extra time, I'll, I'll flip through it or whatever. It's like, mm -hmm. nope, I was lucky to, to, just get to read the ones I the needed to read, that you had to read. So everything you tell me is going to be a complete surprise. All right. Uh, so starting off, I read Justice League number two. I was really excited to read this one because I feel like issue one was a... I, did I call it number two? It's actually number six. <laughs> I, I was going to correct you later. <laughs> it's number two from the new team. Yeah, so many of these things in my head just feel like they're new series starting. But this is actually number 60, but it's the second issue from uh, Bendis taking over Justice League. I really like the first issue of this. Um, I really like the inclusion of Black Adam and Naomi in it. Uh, it it definitely has a lot of Bendis's pacing where... It doesn't just hit you right away with with a slugfest. Um, there, each issue, of course, is going to have a little fight scene in it or something. But he's definitely building up what is this version of the Justice League now. This version of the Justice League is a team that's been together for a while, um, and they know each other very well. I mean, you know, this is right. this is later on in their careers, so they're all on on pretty uh, good terms, like. Green Arrow doesn't mind calling Superman out on something or whatever. So that was a lot in the first one. This one picks up with uh, with Black Adam confronting Naomi about a, a thing that just happened where a, a new villain, Brutus, came from her um, world or universe. We don't quite know yet. That's kind of talked about in this. And he's like, hey, my people back in uh, Kondak got this energy reading. And, you know, what, what's up with it? You know, same time Superman shows up and he's like, hey, he's a bad guy. Um, but what's interesting is pretty quickly they come to find out we're kind of both interested in the same thing. What gets really interesting is when Superman brings Black Adam back to the Justice League, it's like, we're going to be working with him for a little <laughs> bit. And the Justice League, like, what are you talking about? That's Black Adam. He is right. he is one of the worst. And he's like, well, actually, he's he's kind of got his reasons. So it deals a lot with um, a lot of character growth, especially them. Uh, each coming to terms with, do they accept a character like Black Adam into their into their team? Um, then it, uh, we did not have Hippolyta, who we know is going to be on a member a member of this Justice League team. Right. Uh, she does come into play here, and you find out um, why she's coming in here, and also what are her opinions on Black Adam in this team. So I feel like he is a very big part of this. Um, I'm sure no small reason because of the movie and everything. A lot of talk about uh, The Rock being in Black Adam. But I think this is really cool. The, the pacing is not breakneck, but I think it's important. Because it's been a long time since these characters have... Yeah, a lot of characters and a lot quite of a few new ones. Yeah, it, it, they you know how they stand with each other, what they think about current, the current situation in the DC universe. Um, so I think this is really cool. You can tell we're building up to something really big. I'm really excited about where that's going to go, especially with Naomi and Black Adam. Um, we also do have a backup story in this with Justice League Dark. 
that's where that book has has gone is now a backup story in justice league and it's funny because it fits pretty seamlessly into the the main um the main story but this time etrigan the demon is uh they're kind of debating why he should be allowed on like the semi justice league. <laughs> like it, should we have him around? He's, I don't know. It, it's really interesting with him stuff with Merlin going on. There's a character we haven't seen in a while that makes an appearance in this. Um, also there's a pretty cool thing that happens with flash in the main story. So big issue, a lot to say about it, but highly recommend it. I think, um, if you're on the fence about number one, read number two. I say this is going to be one where you really form your opinion after the first, what will probably be a four or five issue story arc, um, where we really see what's what's going to be the big deal with, with this new Justice League. There's this awesome Kale New variant, where you see kind of all those new members of the team. Really, really cool. Everybody's really shiny. I'm going to start off with a book from Marvel. It is a one-shot this week called The Women of Marvel. So this was a very cool book. It is written by, all the art's done by, the penciling, the coloring, everything. And all the stories are done by female creators. So I thought that was really cool yeah. that, they, that they did that. And... Um, it is a lot of stories. They range from one page to like maybe six or seven pages that follow female heroes around. Mm -hmm. There are stories with Lady Deathstrike, uh, Peggy Carter as Captain America, which Ooh. has happened before yeah. and actually follows along that, that old storyline. Emma Frost, Rogue and Mystique, Medusa, Misty Knight has a story, The Daughters of Liberty, <laughs> She-Hulk, Marvel Girl, Marrow and Feral. Um, it, Marrow, you probably remember yeah. the X-Men and Feral. Yeah, they, it has their first meeting, which is pretty <laughs> pretty cool. Hela and Gamora, which Gamora, she kind of, for certain reasons, is on like a dating game show. But, Perfect. Yeah, it's, it's she's still Gamora, though. She's not there yeah. necessarily for the romance. <laughs> um, so the creators on this is uh, Marika Tamaki, Peach Momoko, Sophie Campbell, Zareda Cordova, but one thing that really stood out to me, the stories were neat. They were, they were cool. I, I quite enjoyed it. Like when I was done reading it, I felt like I had read like three different comics yeah. because there were so many things going on in it. But if there's any major first appearances, deaths, none of that. It really is just sort of a celebration of the fact that Marvel has a lot of really cool female characters mm -hmm. and a lot of good talent there. So on the last couple pages, Marvel shows off it's like a picture of a bunch of their female staff members and they're answering the question of who their favorite superhero is. Mm. I'm a sucker for that. I like <laughs> to read what are these people's favorite heroes and why? I yeah. just I, that always interests me and a lot of their answers were really cool. So, I enjoyed it. I thought they did a very good job with it. It's got a few variants. This is the Amanda Connor variant. I did notice, too, that Peach Momoko does interior art. Yes, she does. It looks really nice. It, it, it does. It looks great. Here is a variant by Maria Wolf. I really like this one. That's awesome. If you're going to draw that sword, draw it just giant. It is funny, though. Some of these characters are not in it. Like, Magic is not uh -huh. really... doesn't doesn't get a, a feature story yeah. in this, but there's plenty of other ones. Same with this. This is the Momoko Scarlet Witch. Why Scarlet Witch didn't get her own story? I guess they just have already had so much of her on Disney Plus. Yeah, they want to make room for for everyone else. Awesome. Yep. So next up, I'm going to talk about a Marvel book. This is the Mighty Valkyries number one. So we've been waiting on this. Um, we had the uh, King and Black um, Return of the Valkyries series that really set the stage for for what's to come with this. Um, of course, we now have Jane Foster, who is the the main Valkyrie. And uh, so this, this definitely picks up on a lot of these story threads from Return of the Valkyries. So I, I, I really like Thor. I'm a Thor fan. But this gets in deep with the Norse lore. I mean, this is a very... I mean, there's, there's a lot that happens on Midgard or Earth. But there's a lot of heavy 
uh, Norse mythology going on in this where I was having to, to Google search <laughs> like, who is this character? And, you know, there's wow. there's like so there's a character that I hesitate to say it's a first appearance, but I like searched the character's name and Marvel to see like what it gave me. And it was it was like a short little like entry and they didn't look like what they looked like in this. Mm. And so I'm like, is this a new form of this character? Um, cause the character also comes in and it's like, I go by this name, this name, this name, this name. And I'm like, wait, what? And then I'm looking oh. up and I'm like, these are all different characters. What's going on here? Um, but the, the story is basically there's been some, uh, some attacks in Midgard and Loki, uh, who is in this comes up to, uh, Jane Foster and it's like, Hey, we need to figure out what this is. Uh, there is a giant creature attacking people um, and feeding on their souls. We got to figure out what's going on. Um, that was kind of all teased in the solicitation. There is so much more to this book than than that, which is a really cool story in of itself. But it it dives in deeper. It goes into um, Hela and something really big happens with her. In this and I would say there's another I mean it has to be a first appearance um, of a character that could inevitably be a very big thing I'm not sure uh, in, in what form or how that's dealt with in the series but there's this is just chocked full of of character and you could tell this is this is um, co-written by Jason Aaron who's been writing Thor for what ten years now yeah. I think oh, yeah. this is I mean, he's done his research. It is all in here. Um, really fun book. The art is like nothing you've seen. If you saw the preview pages, it is very realistic. Um, so when you see some of the crazy stuff, it makes it even more kind of shocking to see it that way. Yeah, back on Comics from the Future, we showed previews pages yeah. from it because we were so just impressed with the interior art. Yeah, so if you're a fan of Thor um, and the Valkyrie series that have been going, I think this is good. Um, if you are new to it, uh, I think you'll enjoy it. You may have to Google search some names <laughs> and some some things, but don't let that dissuade you because it is a really really cool book. Um, it's, I mean, if you had to Google search some things, and yeah, I think I can I'm, see that. But I mean, that's nice that the writers, you know, they they trust the audience enough. To yeah, be honest, with, give you characters you might not know, but our story. Will hold you here. <laughs> you know when you're Google searching like Norse things and it's like all the words are like H J R H J R R <laughs> and you're like ooh, ooh Hroth, Hroth stuff. Um, so there is variants like the knock head headshot. Uh, I forgot to mention also in the backup of this, there's a backup story featuring the new Valkyrie. So uh, I think for Halloween this year we should each choose our favorite knock headshot variant and just put that on. <laughs> greet everyone we'll, we'll we'll have the green screen and we'll wear green shirts and then we'll dress our heads up like those characters there, there and just go. float there uh then we have the pacheco reborn variant for the, all the heroes reborn we have the really awesome scotty young cover those are always really fun to read yep And then we have the 1 in 25 uh, Asrar cover, which the scene doesn't exactly happen like this, but very similar. That, and that background, the mirror image of them. There's, It's a really funny. Um, Loki is really good in this. Always always up to the tricking, and he, he has a pretty good one in this. Um, and we are selling that to our customers for $25. Okay, another big one this week, and this is even outside of comics, is <laughs> Batman Fortnite zero point number one. We are doing a one per person while supplies last at our store because this book is red hot. Every phone call I've received today <laughs> is about this book. We've made a lot of kids happy today <laughs> yes. by making sure that you know they aren't all picked up in a big stack by one person. Mm -hmm. So this book, why is it hot? It's because there are 350 million Fortnite users in the world. 
So I think um, I read somewhere that's like six to seven thousand per each comic store. So if even a fraction <laughs> of them want this, why would they want it? Well, you know, it's got Batman. It's it's a comic. They, you know, kids should love comics. I love comics, but. The real reason is there is a code for you to get a skin from for the game mm -hmm. so you can look like a different character. I think in the first one you could be Harley Quinn. Mm -hmm. But let me get to the story. So the story of this is it starts with Batman in Gotham and there's this weird storm of energy. And he's trying to figure out what's going on. He's heard that some heroes and villains have already gone into the storm. And he runs into Harley. Harley seems like she knows something. And then she jumps into the storm. <laughs> so obviously Batman has to follow her. He finds himself in this crazy land. There's a really good two-page spread of Batman surrounded by all the Fortnite characters. <laughs> now, I didn't know anything about the game before I started reading these. Mm -hmm. I've actually read up to the fourth one at this point. They've been giving them to us early. And it's a pretty wild ride. It's been interesting learning about this game. I can definitely tell this is a game that they made the characters for it and then just kept adding to it. Mm -hmm. Like there was no master plan to begin yeah. with. It feels sort of hackneyed together, mm -hmm. but sometimes great things can come yeah. of that. So Batman is very fish out of water in this land. He can't talk. Now I'll tell you, if, if that makes you mad, some people I know don't like the yeah. silent comics. It doesn't stay that way. The, the, the first issue does. There's a lot they do in the art. Um, he runs into Catwoman. They have sort of a connection. There's a lot of battling. I'll say that if you want, you know, some mm -hmm. story with some fighting, you know, there's a ton of that. Batman does have amnesia. So you get to see the world's greatest detective try to figure out who he even is, where he is. All yeah, of that. I like it. And it's like, it, he's like, I'm not, I don't remember who I am, but I know I'm really good at yeah, this stuff. Yeah, <laughs> he, he still knows he's Batman. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I'm not saying this is a perfect comic for deep Batman comic readers. You don't have to run out and get it because I'm telling you it's the greatest Batman mm -hmm. story of all time. Now, Batman the Detective I talked about the other week, I would get that. I yeah. think that's a fantastic <laughs> one. But this was fun. This is a good way to get the Fortnite readers to read comics and get them into another hobby that they can enjoy. Mm -hmm. And we like to talk about just sort of the books that are hot this week for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. This is already selling for much over cover because of the scarcity of it. So that's why I got to tell you about it. And here is a variant for it. Yeah, it's the see. Kenneth Rockefeller variant. Yep. I love that one. It, it's so, I don't know. Characters are so silhouetted nicely against that yellow background. And once again, you know, it's only a minor spoiler, but by issue four, they, there is full-on dialogue. <laughs> things are popping. Things are happening. So I think, it, I mean, this has got to say something for the industry. And, like, this was a very smart move on Fortnite and DC's part of this coming together. I'm sure we're going to see a... Uh, DC or Batman Fortnite 2 or something. I, I guess last word, and we've talked about this in comics from the future, but in issue 3, Batman goes up against Snake Eyes from G.I. Joe. Mm -hmm. So if you want to know how that all comes to pass, you might want to start at issue 1. I'm excited about that. Next up is The Many Deaths of Layla Starr. This is a new book from Boom from Ram V, who's currently writing a Swamp Thing. He's written a lot at, at DC and Marvel lately. He's a really big up-and-coming name. Um, and this is his uh, creator-owned project from Boom. So this is a super interesting book. Um, I Getting into another mythology, this is uh, about gods and and mortals and everything but done in a very interesting way so we have our main character Layla Starr we come to find out her name is um, and I didn't know this from the solicitations or anything but she's just a mortal girl and uh, we don't know a whole lot about her at this point so there's that element just leave that there uh, at the same time there is a a husband and wife in uh, Mumbai who are trying to get to the hospital because the the wife is pregnant she's about to have the baby so there's that and then we go to it says um, a tower high above mortal clouds and we meet uh, the god death 
who is going up for a meeting with her boss, which is just a, such a great concept in of itself. And he basically tells her, hey, um, there's going to be born uh, someone who in their life is going to invent immortality. So doesn't look too good for your job. Um, but we got this really great plan uh, that all of our gods have if they're not needed anymore. You can go to Earth and live out the rest of a mortal life in the body of, of, a, of a mortal and just get to have all the fun there. It's basically like you got your right. pink slip and, and your, your pension or whatever is like <laughs> you, you get to be a mortal. Um, they put you out to pasture by sending you to Earth with all of us. Yeah, so Death, needless to say, not too excited about this. But she has an idea. She says um, to the, the, her boss's assistant, like, hey, you're in charge of sending me to Earth in this, to go into a mortal body. Could you send me uh, near where this kid is going to be born that's going to invent immortality? And so uh, he's like, oh, I guess so. I don't know why you'd want to do that. Um, so this guy ends up in this body of Layla Starr, who something happens to her. And it's a, from there, it is a kind of a roller coaster ride of this god now in this mortal body um, with some other ghosts that she can see these spirits. Um, and of course, this is when, I mean, this baby's going to be born. And it's like, is she really going to kill this? And pre to prevent this? So it kind of sets up this whole interesting world of will she, won't she? And this, this whole hierarchy of gods. Really, really cool issue. Um, I, I try to explain as much of it as I can because I feel like the cover doesn't say a whole lot about it. Uh, but when you read it, I, I think it's it's going to be a really big book because it is just it is so interesting and so new and different. Um, art is great. Uh, really, really fun. We have a variant for it. This is Foil Variant. By David Mack. The David Mack. And that know. is uh, Death on the cover before in her mortal form. David Mack was born to draw Kabuki. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And then we have a 1 in 25 variant for our customers for $20. And you can even see her kind of police sketch. She has the extra arms. Yeah, that premise sounds great. I'm looking forward to reading that. I, th I think, you know, Boom's been, been really hitting it out of the park. And I think this is going to be another one that people are going to really glom on to because... It, it uses a lot of um, mythologies and characters and stuff that we don't get too much, especially in Western market. It, we, we like Greek and Norse and everything, but this is a whole new thing. And it's also supposedly a five-issue miniseries, mm -hmm. but I've caught on to Boom now. <laughs> they say things are going to be five issues, but if they do well, they're ongoing. So I grab up the number ones yeah. that I think look good. That one looks pretty cool to me. So I read from Aftershock Comics... The Girls of Dimension 13. I mean, that's the only way I can hear yeah, it in my head. That's, that's how it's actually written. If you and yes, right. those are the girls right there. They are not <laughs> of Dimension 13 yet, though, unless Dimension 13 turns out to be Earth. That hasn't been revealed. You're writing your own story. <laughs> what is revealed about this, this is this is a, uh, a pretty cool book. I, I enjoyed it. I definitely recommend it if you like... Um, what I tell you about it here. So it is a superhero meets sci-fi mystery story. Mm. That is the best way I can say. These girls have superpowers. Um, in fact, they don't gain them. I'll say that straight out. They've had the powers, but they don't know each other. So it starts out in New York City, this really awesome house in a very expensive neighborhood. And one of the girls shows up and it turns out she's going to be roommates with the other girls. And they all receive this mysterious offer from this older woman on, you can come live in my super expensive household in super expensive New York for free if you just take care of my house. That's it. Mm. So as with all things, you know, with, with, <laughs> when things sound too good to be true, they probably aren't yeah. that true. So the girls, they start to get to know each other. It's kind of revealed that one of them has superpowers. And they all kind of figure out that each one has superpowers. 
Um, and, you know, they were all keeping it kind of secret from yeah. the world, from most people. The powers include, uh, one has the power over air. So I guess sort of like Storm, but without all yeah. the other powers like that. One has telepathy and telekinesis. One has matter manipulation. My favorite one, I talked about this on Comics from the Future back when I mm -hmm. originally read the um, a preview -ish of it. She's able to open portals, and I can't tell if they're all the same, but the one I see, it has like, you know, tentacles reach out and grab your enemies <laughs> and yank them into the portal. So I think the characters are really good, really colorful. Beyond that, so what's going on? What is Dimension 13? There's a room in the house that they're told not to go into. Obviously, they end of up course. going into it. There's a mirror in that room that leads to another dimension, which I think is Dimension 13. Hmm. And the mirror calls to them. It, it, it sort of uh, makes them want to go hmm. into this thing. So you'll have to read the comic to see what happens. I will say they're also taking care of a dog who's on the estate, who may be a lot more than what he seems to be. <laughs> but I thought it was good. I thought the art was good. The story um, moved forward at a good speed. Mm -hmm. I'm interested in these characters. I like superhero tales that aren't just, I want to save the world. Yeah. I, I mean, I love those two, but we've got a million of these. This is different. These are, you know, girls trying to get to know each other, revealing their powers, and it looks like they're going to end up in a different realm than Earth. Hmm. So I, I think it's a really cool premise. I, I think it was one of the, the better new Aftershock books I've read. Um, you know, they, they've, had, they've had a few hits yeah. lately, though. So there is this 1 in 15 Nolan variant that we are selling to our clientele for $15. It's very, like, kind of psychedelic, mm -hmm. trippy. Yep. And you see the dog on the cover there, so... So briefly, I'm going to talk about Superman, red and blue. I keep wanting to say red, white, and blue. But uh, this is number two. So uh, this is much like Batman black and white or Wolverine red, white, and blood red or Carnage. All the companies are doing these right now. And they are anthology books that have a couple different stories in them by different creative teams that kind of spotlight what makes the character great or fun aspects of them. Uh, this one is neat for a couple of reasons. One, my personal favorite Superman is 90s mullet Superman <laughs> during uh, Death of Superman and then uh, all the Reign of the Superman stories and everything. Our, our Dollar Box's favorite Superman is that one too. Oh yeah, we could. <laughs> me and the Dollar Box collect a lot of the same books. Um, and so it's a really cool story in this that kind of goes back to that with uh, Cyborg Superman, a lot of those characters. So if you're a fan of that time frame, I think that's what's really strong about series like this is it doesn't have to be in continuity. It doesn't have to be um, either super serious. Sometimes it can be, but it doesn't always have to be. There is also a really interesting story that is a play off of the Superman versus Muhammad Ali oh, really? um, story. Uh, involves awesome. a boxing match, which, I mean, there needs to be like an ongoing series of Superman just boxing different people. But <laughs> every uh, <laughs> celebrity who was in the background of that oh, original yes. Superman versus Muhammad Ali. So that's really fun. And then one I think it's going to be kind of a uh, a key for people is there is a story with President Superman, which okay. is the uh, African American Superman that. Uh, who is it? J.J. Abrams is producing, and um, oh, the writer of Tom Nahisi Coates. Yeah, is, is also writing. Yeah, Calvin Ellis. Yeah, so right. there is. We haven't seen that character featured much recently. No. Only when they dive into the multiverse type thing, he is he's a pres the president of Earth, like seventeen or something like that. Mm. But this gives me the idea that we're going to start seeing him a lot more often. I think it's really cool. Um, that he's getting brought back into the forefront, uh, much like how um, the next Batman from Future State had a story in uh, Batman Black and White. Now we get President Superman in this, and it's like, oh, this is a really good way of kind of bringing people, give them a taste of these characters uh, maybe they haven't read before. Um, this book does have some variants. I believe we sold out of all the variants. But you can, you know, check with your local store, find out if they've got some. But uh, even this A cover is really, really nice. That strong-jawed Superman.
could crack some walnuts with that <laughs> with that nutcracker mouth. Okay, so I talked a lot about this on Comics from the Future when um, it was first yes. solicited. I got to read a preview copy of this. So the other week I was talking about, I, I know I'm switching to DC for a second, but I was talking about Batman the Detective, and I was like, I know a lot of you say there's too many Batman books. Well, sorry, I got another you need to read. Well, I know a lot of people think there are too many X-Men books, and I'm going to do the same pitch here. Too bad. This is one you need to read. <laughs> <laughs> if there was one you were thinking about, drop in, maybe drop it and grab this instead. This was one of my favorite reads back when I read it. Um, it was like not that long ago. This about, book had a pretty fast turnaround. Yeah, I think it was about three weeks ago I mm -hmm. got to read the preview issue. So this is Way of X number one. This is a new ongoing series. The number one is a 30-page number one, so it's mm -hmm. longer than your regular comic, and stars Nightcrawler, who really has needed his own series for oh, some yeah. time. So uh, there is so much going on in this book. Uh, I'll try to keep it brief, but even with everything I say, there's more going on. In it. <laughs> so Cy Spurrier, he is really doing a fantastic job with some of the stuff he's writing right now. And uh, this is probably my favorite of the things I've read by him lately. So what's going on is Krakoa is getting kind of weird. Anyone who's been keeping up with X-Men can attest Just to that. Just now? And that place has been <laughs> weird since it's, it's uh, Okay, first. so the root of this is mutants can come back to life and so death starts not really mattering to them especially mm -hmm. a lot of the younger mutants who haven't been around long enough you know i mean if you're wolverine you've seen a lot of death and now you can't die like you still remember what it was mm -hmm. like but a lot of these youngster x characters just don't get it to the point that they're sort of joking about it in fact one of them actually in the book gets killed on purpose just because they hadn't before mm. you know and they're getting made fun of like oh you're afraid to die ha 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 <laughs> it's it's pretty you know uh shocking kind of unsettling honestly. yeah yeah and um so nightcrawler notices this he he just a lot of this is in his thoughts and he's like there's something wrong going on here uh there's sort of a lack of reverence and uh meanwhile you have Professor X, he wakes up from this terrible dream where he senses there's an Omega-level mutant who is possibly messing with all of them. Now, I can tell you for sure there is a first appearance in this book of a new character called the Patchwork Man. Mm -hmm. Now, is that character the Omega-level mutant? I'm not sure. It doesn't reveal it. Legion also has something to do with this book. So it could be Professor X was sensing Legion mm -hmm. And so the Patchwork Man is just a different character. But it could also be Patchwork Man is the Omega-level mutant, which would be a big deal. Yeah. There are less than a dozen Omega-level mutants out there. So when they introduce one, it's always a really big deal. So I've grabbed several of these yeah. just in case that's, that's the case. Plus, it's just, a, it's just a really good read. So Professor X goes to Nightcrawler and says, look, I know that you know that something <laughs> is screwy is going on. I want you to figure it out. And Nightcrawler's like, well, why me? Why not a telepath? Why not Jean Grey? And Professor X basically says, you're, you're the one with the right spirit for this. Mm. You're the person that has sort of just the good heart, the good nature, which, which he does. He has mm -hmm. that faith that, you know, really propels um, his, his, his ethics and how he cares about people. So um, the writing really awesome. The last Magneto holds this ceremony. So a while back, Scarlet Witch did something that made a lot of mutants lose their powers. Mm -hmm. Well, they can gain their powers back if they die. Well, if you don't have your powers, you're not a mutant anymore. And so Magneto has this ceremony where it's like you either get out of Krakoa or we can perform this ritual on you to get your powers back. Mm -hmm. Well, that ritual involves death. I mean, it's pretty messed up. I mean, the whole thing about Nightcrawler saying Krakoa is getting scary and weird you really, really <laughs> see it in this issue. Um, so I highly recommend it. I think it's a very, very strong beginning of a, of a new X book that, you know, if some of you have fallen off the other ones, I would give this one a read. So we've got several variants here. Here, actually, actually, I only have one variant here. I'm sorry. This is the Vincetti variant. It is a wraparound. So there's... The rest of it right there and yeah nightcrawler he teleports so he can be on the front and the back <laughs> he could be all over it and uh we do have some incentives 
This is the 1 in 10 design variant for 10 bucks. That's what we're selling it to our customers. And here is the 1 in 25 Dodson variant that we're selling for $25. Cool. I'm excited about that one. The way you talked it up. Yeah. I mean, it, I'm really hoping it delivers. Good. You talked it up, but I, I believe it will. Be I believe it will. I love Nightcrawler. So next up is a uh, interesting one based on kind of what happened in the previous issue. This is Captain Marvel number 28. So uh, if you've been following Captain Marvel, which I've been off and on, I know in general kind of what's been going on, but basically there's this future timeline that's all messed up, um, kind of your classic post-apocalyptic superhero timeline. Um, so Captain Marvel is going to try to prevent that, and she figures the only way I can stop this big thing from happening is I've got to learn how to do magic. My normal power set is not uh, is not adequate to do this. They, there's ways of combating, um, you know, my normal like superhero powers. So she goes to the best uh, magician she knows, Doctor Strange, and basically is like, hey. I need you to teach me magic. And Doctor Strange, you know, kind of in that, like, a little bit smarmy Doctor Strange way, is like, you think you can just <laughs> learn <laughs> magic? And he basically tells her, this is, you know, this is different. Like, you have to either be born with it or something has to happen to you. You don't just learn it. Um, so this is uh, it's the start of a new story arc where it called Sorceress Supreme, where Captain Marvel is going to attempt to learn magic. So she does get a really cool new costume. Uh, I won't say what happens with her and Doctor Strange because um, at the end of last issue. Well, at the end of last issue <laughs> for sure. There's some there's some awkward moments from that. It's a little spicy with them. Yeah, uh, but also. If Doctor Strange isn't going to teach her magic, who will? She may go uh, knocking on some doors and end up in some pretty dark places looking to learn magic. Um, so it's got a really interesting kind of final page reveal. I, I think this is really cool. I don't know how long this uh, Captain Marvel who can do magic will last, but I really like her new costume. I think this is a, a new story with her that we haven't seen before, and I'm really excited to... Uh, read this story arc. Yeah, I mean, she's such a powerful character. I think it was very clever of the writer to say, let's put her in a position where her powers don't work. Let's, yeah. let's make it, strip that away. Yeah. You know, not even strip it away, because she still has them, but they're just ineffective. Yeah. So. And you know, for a character who can basically deal with whatever, to kind of humbly go to somebody and be like, the one thing I don't know how to do is what you do. Will you teach me that? So, a uh, really interesting issue... Um, I, I'll be very interested to see how this plays out. Um, so we have the variant, which is the Reborn variant, the Pacheco Reborn variant. I turned the stone on it. And then we have, which I think is an awesome cover, this is the Ortega variant. And in those little circles, you can kind of see some of the doors she goes knocking on, and it's, there's some great moments of kind of a collage uh, page or multiple panels where you get all of their different responses <laughs> and she even knocks on some doors of characters that maybe don't like her too much and they've got a thing or two to say so really cool um, I'm excited about kind of the new stuff going on with Captain Marvel all right so another hot book this week Nightwing number 79 I really enjoyed 78 79 did not disappoint me whatsoever so you got uh, Dick Grayson. He is still hanging out with Barbara Gordon. He's been sort of reminiscing on his past and about his parents and everything like that. But meanwhile, there's a new villain who is terrorizing Bloodhaven. And this is sort of why this issue is heated up. The last one heated up because it was just a fantastic issue yeah. and it was just scarce. People couldn't find it. Mm -hmm. This one continues with some really good writing. Um, the new villain is named Heartless. The, it, it's their cameo. So if you're somebody who likes to pick up mm -hmm. sort of new villain stuff, uh, I would grab this quickly. It is disappearing from our shelves. 
and it's going to be hard to find. I think this is going to be another one they're going to have to do a second print of. Um, meanwhile, there is more to do with his new dog. Nightwing has a new dog, yes. so there's some of that. The real hero of the story. But I think my favorite, maybe not my favorite, but one of my favorite parts of this, something embarrassing happens to Nightwing mm -hmm. that Barbara Gordon gets to witness. And it, it's really funny what happens. And he tells her, he's like, don't tell Batman. Please don't <laughs> let Batman find out. And the problem with that is, you know, if you don't want Batman to know something, he probably already knows yeah, it. Yeah. But I, I did think it's funny. It's nice to see, um, you know, just these heroes in sort of awkward positions. He, he probably, Batman has a Google alert for anytime someone says, don't tell Batman. <laughs> it immediately records and tells him what that just happened. Yeah. So there is the variant by Jamal Campbell. I like the perspective on that. Just the whole city looking sort of fisheye lens. Yeah, he doesn't care. He'll jump mm. off anything. Yep. Cool. Next up we have Ultra Mega number two. So uh, this is written and art by James Heron. And these are extra size issues. So the first issue, really cool. Um, kind of your classic uh, Ultraman, Godzilla, your, your giant warrior versus Kaiju, but with a twist. Uh, this guy who is this um, ultra mega character is kind of, kind of schlubby, kind of, uh, no, not... He's good at his job, but, you know, he maybe wasn't the greatest pick for it. Um, but the end of the last issue had a something really, really big happen, and then there was a huge time jump. Well, this picks up after that time jump, and we see what happened with the big fallout from the previous issue. So, I'm not going to give too much away. There is, uh, it, it's hard to, when a series is so early, to be like, it's a first appearance, it's a first appearance, because yeah. we're still setting the stage right. for a lot of characters. Um, unlike in Invincible, which now people are going back and be like, well, issue two is <laughs> the first appearance of this person and everything. Yeah. But there is um, first appearances of the characters after this time jump and where uh, some of the threads that were left in the previous issue pick up with maybe some new people picking up a mantle that was left previously. So it is another giant size issue. It's kind of hard to tell there, but uh, another big issue. This whole first story arc is going to be oversized. I really like the first one. It's crazy, crazy monsters, over the top action, um, very violent, as you'll see on one of these other covers, but done in that way. Also like Invincible, that's like, so outrageous it's like not monty python but where it's like it's not as offensive because it's just done uh so crazily but uh yeah so there's the a cover and this one has quite a few variants so there is as you can see the b cover with some of what happened in the previous issue so much blood so much that uh, there's even reference to when there's that much blood, it kind of drowns a city, and then years later, they're still dealing with that. Um, there is the one in five ratio variant of that cover, which we are selling for 15. Then we have the uh, one in 10 variant of the A cover. With, I mean, you can see him on there, a new character on there that we are selling to our customers for 20 And then, wanted to mention this as well because the number one sold so well, they did a second printing with this awesome, awesome cover. You can see really James Heron's art and his like weird creature design. Yeah, I think it was really smart for him to put the eye in the corner because we humans were drawn to the eyes and yeah. if it was too far down, we'd be looking at that instead of the crazy <laughs> thing that's happening on instead. So, really cool second printing cover. If you missed the first one or you just really like this cover, definitely want to pick that one up. 
Okay, so I read Haha ha, number four. This has been a really cool series. I think a lot of people have been enjoying it. This is the Everything Floats issue. And I will say one thing the writer does for this, he is really good at picking a theme and sticking with it. Mm -hmm. So everything does float. This this references, of course, it. Yeah. This references the movie Up in this. <laughs> <laughs> it, uh, you, you have people flying kites in it, floating around. It, you have people who aren't doing that, too. There's, like, the real-life stuff on the ground, but then there's all the floating mm. things. Um, it, people tying balloons to, to lawn chairs and floating <laughs> off. I mean, anything that floats, I think, it's like he wrote up a huge list and was like, all right, now how can this work in this creepy terrifying clown story mm -hmm. um, but what does all this have to do with a missing clown who doesn't show up for a kid's birthday party that's sort of the initial premise but like i said it really stays on theme there is a variant for it we're all sold out mm -hmm. I, I don't have it to show off but um we'd be remiss if we didn't talk about the latest issue of haha -Ha. we try to bring up all the the hot books that people want to yeah. hear about so Okay, next up, we have, just briefly mentioned, we have the issue of Catwoman, um, continuing from the previous creative team, Joel Jones, and uh, artists by uh, Blanco. It is, uh, it's really cool. If you haven't been reading Catwoman, it's just, it has some attitude. It's a really, really cool book, but also mainly want to mention this one as well, because the variant for this is awesome. Let me see. Did I just say okay. Ah, here we go. Stacks and stacks of comics. So many comics folks. we have to we have to go <laughs> through them all. It's the Jenny Frizen variant. So really, really cool. Need to check out Catwoman if you haven't. Okay, so I read Carnage Black, White, and Blood number two. This is the Carnage anthology series where all the art is done in black, white, and blood red. It has three stories in it. The first story is done by Donnie Cates. So, oh, wow. Yeah, I was really interested to read that. And I'll tell you something else, and this might be the first place you hear it. This is a post-King and Black story. It actually refers to King and Black. This is about Carnage sort of after the fall of the King and Black. And he's thinking about, oh, he was tough, but he's not that impressed. He ultimately, <laughs> Carnage is like, yeah, he had all that godlike power. He's still, he still lost. I'm still here, though. I'm Carnage. And he starts wondering if he can't fight these Venom things. You'll have to see what I mean in this. Uh, to maybe become a King in Red himself. Wow. As in King in bl of Blood is what he wants to be. The beginning of it is great. Um, Carnage, he, you know, they're all symbiotes, so they can meld with different hosts. It seems like Venom, he doesn't really do that with a lot of people. Carnage is much more um, looser. <laughs> Parasitic. <laughs> he, correct. He, he will meld with more people, but also more creatures. And mm. it starts out, he is melded with this creature. And seeing what he does with this is, is really, really cool. So just the first story by Donny Cates is well worth the pickup. The second story is by Chip Zdarsky, and it's about a kid who just has a really tough home life. But uh, that's okay because he has this, this red friend he talks to. <laughs> so creepy. Yeah, and this red friend tells him, you know, what he should do to better his life. And But, but who does this red friend have held out in the barn out back? Uh, uh, let's just say it's a uh, guest starring someone who is often described as amazing. Sometimes he's described as spectacular. You'll just have to read the, lo the rest of the uh, Peter Parker, <laughs> Friendly Neighborhood. I, I, can't, I can't say. You'll, you'll have to see. The last story is by Ram V. Okay. You were talking Man, about he before. is working hard. Yeah, so this takes place in sort of the Arctic tundra which is, in a way, the birthplace of Carnage. By that, I mean where Carnage first arrived on our planet. Mm. And it follows some people who are trying to get to this mysterious rock, which by the end you'll understand what the rock is. And uh, they're having a tough time. They're dying. But is it Carnage or is it each other? 
I will also say Carnage does take a new host at the end of that tale. Ooh. He does. Now, I don't know if it's going to stay. Like I've said before, he tends to take more hosts mm -hmm. than Venom. So it might just be he takes this host, you know, they get back to town, you'll never see him again. But it could be this guy sticks around because I will say Carnage is impressed in a way with this new character mm. and sort of uh, his, his lack of caring for his fellow man. Mm -hmm. So we'll just have to see about that. There is a couple of variants. This is the Kyle Hotz variant. I'm really happy to see Kyle Hotz back doing these covers. He's an awesome he's, artist. You know, guys are starting to do uh, symbiote, symbiote characters. stuff. Yeah, he, he can do a lot, honestly. He did a lot of really good Moon Knight covers mm -hmm. a while back. And then we have the 1 in 25 Momoko variant that we are selling for $30. It's interesting you mentioning that like Carnage will kind of he's a little bit more willy nilly with who he gets on, but that is also kind of the scary part about him is he Venom tends to like bond with yeah. whoever he is. Carnage uses them. Yep. That's, and that's, I think right. that's a that's cool that we're getting a series that you see all those facets of that character. Mm -hmm. So next up we have speaking of scary Alien number two. So this picks up um, with our uh, our main character Gabriel Cruz, um, who is a retired space marine uh, who is one of the very few people who ever survived an alien attack. Um, but every time I write about his son that is also in this. I just put, looking for his son, who is an idiot. Because uh, if you read the first one, he thought he was doing this righteous thing. He's this rebel character. But he ended up unleashing all the aliens, oh which is just... It is hard to ever recover as a character <laughs> when you do when that. When you do like, that, yeah. you're done. Like you, You're that one guy you who the was careless. Out of the yep. Um, and so now his uh, dad is following in his footsteps, trying to track down where he is, and comes to discover the horrors that his son unleashed. Um, I really like the first one. I know there were some people who were like, ah, I don't know, it was, it was kind of slow or whatever, but I think Alien works when you have that slow build. Yeah. Um, Alien fails when the alien is too often and in your face and just becomes you know the stormtrooper of the of the alien universe you know just one after another after another that can be fun like with aliens but you you still need to build that tension and i think they're really building the tension especially with it's not just the main kind of xenomorph that was let out of the cage there's other versions too and i'm excited to see what they do with those we talked about a little bit of the last one this kind of new alpha prime alien and everything um so I, I think this one does have more action in it more suspense uh but i it was really cool i really liked issue two and yeah. then we have this is a really nice variant yeah i believe this is the hans variant a lot of people have asked us for that one yeah just that silhouette it makes it even on a bright sunny day like this cover aliens are still scary or he's jumping out of a big pool of mustard. And okay. Then, oh, oh, I've got, you, I got another. Got more. But wait, there's more. There is the 1 in 25 Pacheco variant. Forgot about that one, yeah. Which is really nice that we're selling to our customers for 20 All right, so I read Flash number 769. You can see on the cover a little bit of what happens in this. He meets Gold Beetle which is, is very cool. Gold Beetle premiered in one of the Future State books. I think mm -hmm. it was Future State Suicide Squad. Yep. Um, so I would describe this book in one word as fun. It is just a fun book. So last issue, you have Wally West. He wanted the Speed Force to lose his powers, but he got tossed around somehow. Something <laughs> happened. 
that's incorrect and it's tossing him through time last issue he was with dinosaurs he was back in time mm-hmm. with dinosaurs who had uh flash powers so he's like <laughs> running from dinosaurs that are running after him and attacking him he gets propelled this time into the future so he's sort of in legion of superhero time mm-hmm. and uh he not only is he getting tossed around through time he is being put inside of people. So he's inside of Impulse, who apparently is the partner of Gold Beetle. Mm -hmm. And they're in the middle of a mission, so he has to do this mission with her. Gold Beetle is really cool. She's really funny, she's really charming, but she's also a very effective character. Mm -hmm. She's not like uh, ditzy or clumsy or anything like that. She she actually has a really cool power set and is able to figure out pretty quickly, hey, in fact, I know who you are, you're Wally West. (laughs) And uh, Wally's never met her, but because she also goes through time, Mm -hmm. she's like, oh, I've met you a bunch of times. (laughs) Oh, this is the first time we've met? You know, I I like concepts like that. Where one one person, yeah, just can wrap their head around this, and the other's just like, what? (laughs) I've seen you now, but I've met you before. So um, without telling the entire tale, they, for some reason, they have to basically pull off a heist together. So a lot lot going on in this book. And um, by the end of it, he is propelled to a different time, and it looks like next issue he is going to be going up against Adolf Hitler and the Third Reich. What? So when I say this book is fun, that's what I mean. Like, you can tell they're just having a good time with this. They're like, let's take a flash, let's mess with his powers, let's have it where it's not just him either. I don't know who he'll be in yeah. inside of for the next issue. Um, sometimes he has his power, sometimes he doesn't. Not to mention, he still has a mental connection with uh, Barry Allen. So we see what's going on outside of this, mm. too. And Barry is able to give him advice, some of which works, some of it doesn't. <laughs> but really, Gold, Gold Beetle kind of steals the show. Mm. We get to see her vehicle. We get to see how that works. So uh, pretty pretty cool issue. And uh, here is the variant by Zizu. Just the face that... Wally's making on that just I I know and you know I don't think this is fair this does not happen in the book (laughs) they actually get along pretty well from what I remember but it's still a really cool variant cover I think yeah next up is one of my favorite new books Radiant Black this is issue number three so Being such a big Invincible fan I am, I feel like this definitely kind of fills that void um, that I had with indie superheroes, kind of young indie superheroes. Um, So, the you know, the story, we've we've talked about it many times, this guy who's kind of down on his luck, who's back in with his parents, he's kind of a failed writer, um, stumbles upon this, this kind of black hole that gives these crazy crazy armor and powers and everything. Um, there's kind of some mystery about where they come from. Uh, this issue is really interesting because he is a failed rider. They start getting that, and there's a couple pages in here that are just, you can kind of tell, are like typed up or script from him and kind of the story he's trying to tell and, you know, how that reflects what's going on with his life and... Uh, maybe some of the adventures he's doing are inspiring some of his writings, which I think is a, a pretty cool thing. Especially, you know, this is written by a writer, so this has to be kind of uh, fulfilling to say, this writer is is starting to get better at it and everything. Uh, uh, Kyle Higgins is an awesome writer. Um, but the other thing I want to mention in this is, in a previous issue, in the background, there was uh, TVs, like in this bar, and on those TVs was Savage Dragon, which no one said, like, oh, Radiant Black crosses over with the Image universe or anything. But there's hints whether they are, like, seeding something or whether they're just fun nods. Um, this one has some more of those with uh, characters that are uh, Savage Dragon adjacent, um, some more classic Image characters. Um, maybe you don't see them, but you, I don't know, you get the idea of them pretty, pretty clearly. 
Yeah, uh, strong, strong nod. Strong, he, he, strong nod. While while Andy was reading it, he had to show me. He's like, "Look, look." Yeah, it's like and there, and it's just a great sense of humor too. With it, there's a lot of nods, even so, even a nod to Kyle Higgins riding Power Rangers for a while. So Radiant Black, it's just I think it's one of the the best new series on the stands. Uh, also has. I mean, one of the craziest variant covers we've got in a long time. It is a computer screen with a file in the top that says Radiant Black number three. You've got some uh, uh, dot like, doc files that are the, the writer and artist. And then one that says, uh, it's kind of a header for his book, and it says, are you really sure you actually want to attempt to write this novel? Do you really think you can do this? And it's about to click on no. So I just think that's awesome. This is very creative. Uh, it's rare to see like them taking big risks with variants like that. And then there is the 1 in 25 Montez variant, which super cool. I feel like we're kind of getting an idea of uh, you know the cosmic levels of this character. We are selling this one for 30 And then, finally, one to mention, there is Radiant Black number two second printing, which they've been doing awesome stuff with these second printings, giving them whole new covers. So, if you're trying to collect them all, definitely want to get this one. So, I read Orphan and the Five Beasts number two by James Stoko. I really like the first issue. Issue, and I have to say this one did not disappoint a bit. This is the craziest, wildest comic I've read in a long time. That, that's <laughs> all I can say about it. I'm not joking. Crazy, wild, insane things that go on in this book. Um, so Orphan Mo has been trained by the Master to take down the Five Deadly Beasts, which the Five Deadly Beasts were his previous students, who he had to teach these awesome powers to to take down an even bigger villain. But since then, they've kind of gone mad with their power. Mm. So uh, the first villain is called Thunder Thighs. Yeah. <laughs> and he has these huge, muscly thighs. Just, you know? just the craziest, bulging vein thighs. Yeah, yeah. And, I mean, he's the sort of person, in issue one, he's sitting on top of a horse, and just to prove how tough he is, he just squeezes a little and the horse explodes. <laughs> Um, so Orphan Mo, this whole issue is the battle they have. I thought, since this is a limited series, I think it's five issues, I figured we would get another one of the five beasts in this. You don't really, I mean, it's just one big battle. But first, you learn how did um, Thunderthigh get his powers. You get an origin story for Thunderthigh, you get the training <laughs> story, like how did he train? How did he get these thighs <laughs> that are so powerful? <laughs> The art is as crazy as the story. I mean, the art is, is it's awesome. I like it. If you, if you like indie comics that are really wild and as violent as the person wants to do, without being just like a gore fest for yeah. no reason, it's almost like, I don't know, 40% humor, 60% gore. But there, there are stakes here. Yeah. There are definitely stakes here. That, that is Orphan the Five Beasts. Um, the battle is incredible. It just goes and goes. When you think it's over, there's more. People have to get involved. Uh, it's, it's, I don't know, I read a lot of comics, so my mind is always guessing, here's what's going to happen next. No, I cannot guess what's going to happen next in this. I the hope thing they you told animate me about, this. The, the thing, it's just... Yeah, it's, it's really awesome. So the people who like that sort of thing, you're going to love it. Um, I, I recommend it. Once again, wildest, craziest comic that I've read in a long time. And it just has the one cover. That's it. It's James Stokoe doing the whole thing. He writes it. He does all the art. So pr pretty amazing. Cool. Next up is a new series from IDW, Godzilla Monsters and Protectors. Um, so what has me excited about this is the creative team on this uh, – I think it's uh, Burnham and, um, oh, I forget his name now. Uh, it's the creative team from Ghostbusters, the IDW series Ghostbusters, that was so, so good. Um, that was, I don't want to say better than I had any right to be, 
but I mean, a lot of times properties taken from movies and stuff, they just rehash the same stuff over and over. Uh, Ghostbusters had a long run that was uh, brought like new stuff to the story and everything. Well, that team is now on Godzilla, and this is a fun uh, all ages. But when I say all ages, it I think it's great for anybody. Um, about something happens that uh, really gets Godzilla mad. I mean, how hard is that? But <laughs> you, of course, like just big, big industry does something, and now Godzilla's about to go on a rampage, and it's up to um, this group of like young teens to try to convince Godzilla that uh, humanity is worth saving. And like one of the kids is like a super a Godzilla fan or kaiju fan. He does like a YouTube show about it. Um, really, it, it's, a, it's really, really cool. I mean, the art in it, let's see, where's some of those? Uh... I mean, you just get great like two page spreads of Godzilla. Just you really get the, the size and everything. Uh, Dan Shoning, that's the artist. Um, it's been a while since we've had just a really, really cool Godzilla book, and I'm excited to see. I think this is only like three or four issues long, so it's a short series, but I, I hope we get more of it, because Godzilla fever is, is high right now. Um, there's also this super great variant cover, the photo variant, which this is definitely taken more from the, uh, the classic Godzilla movies. Um, than the the newer one, so it, it's a little bit more fun. Godzilla has a little bit more of a like a quirky personality, and then we have the one in ten Holland's variant, featuring those twins uh, who sing and Mothra appears or whatever from the oh, original right. movies. Okay. Yeah. Um. So really cool. I know. Uh, there's going to be some other kaiju if this doesn't give you a a little idea of who's going to show up in this. Um, and I think it's really cool we're, we're, we're getting a comic right now with all the Godzilla stuff going on. So much kaiju. <laughs> so Black Knight, Curse of the Ebony Blade, number two, comes out tomorrow. I have read this. This is also by Cy Spurrier, so the writing is top-notch. It goes over... Not the origin of the current Black Knight, but his ancestry. Mm -hmm. You know, who were the Black Knights before him? Why Why are there Black Knights? What? Where is the Ebony Blade from? So it starts going into the history of all of that as, as he's trying to figure out, is he really cursed forever with his sword? Or can can he live, live with himself and deal with sort of the urges it gives him? Meanwhile, there's a villain who is killing professors and stealing their blood. Hmm. It's not revealed as to why yet, but Elsa Bloodstone, she gets involved. She thinks it's the Black Knight. We've been with them, though, as a reader, so we know <laughs> it's not. So there's a cool battle between them. And let's see. There is this 1 in 25 Stephanie Hans variant. I think it's one of the classic Black Knights on that one. For $35. There's also an Elsa bloodstone or she's she's on the cover there yeah right yes there there's a variant with just her this there one. we go <laughs> yes so there's the other variant that has her on it she's a cool character that pops up not too often but that's has why a cool I, history I, I wasn't gonna say she was in it because you know we try not to do spoilers but she's right on the variant cover, <laughs> yeah so. yeah uh next up just the one Star Wars book this week. Uh, it's Dr. Aphra. Um, the series has been really, really cool. Um, we're not quite yet to the tie-in with the War of the Bounty Hunters. I think there's uh, issue after next will be the first tie-in with that. Um, but it's just a great series. I, I, you know, a lot of people will read Vader and Star Wars. Um, but if you're not reading Dr. Aphra, definitely pick it up. It's it's so much fun. Um, but I also wanted to show off this 1 in 25 
height variant, which is really, really heating up, that we are selling for 45. Okay, so Avengers number 45 is out this week. It feels like 44 just happened, yeah. where they revealed who got the Phoenix powers. Um, since that is past, I'm going to talk about it. If you don't want to hear who got the Phoenix power, sorry. I, I have to discuss it to discuss the issue a little. But first, this issue has a lot to do with Blade, actually. So this is a King and Black tie-in, in a sense. It happens after King and Black. And a lot of it is the vampires helped fight against Null. And now they want something. Hmm. What happens when Blade, you know, who is no fan of, the, of theirs... <laughs> is told to stand down by Captain America. Like, you know, Blade's like, yeah. no, I'm just going to kill them all. <laughs> and Captain America is like, no, we made a deal with them. You cannot do this. So you get to see how that plays out, which is really interesting. Um, but at the same time, you have Echo, who mm -hmm. has her new powers, and she's starting to try to cope with them. Robbie Reyes, Ghost Rider, mm -hmm. he's in it a lot. He's trying to, to help her because he, he knows what it's like to have... Uh, you know, Fire fi powers. fiery <laughs> powers. Exactly. Um, but in the end, it there's sort of a surprise ending where a compromise is reached with what Blade wants to do, what the vampires want, and what the Avengers will allow. And it puts Blade in a new position of power that you've never quite seen him mm. in. And I wish I could tell you, but it's, it's too cool of a surprise. Like, you know, I'll let people read it. We know Heroes Reborn involves Blade right. quite a bit, being the only one who remembers stuff before. You feel like is this leading up to? I, I, I don't think so. Okay. Um, I I've read Heroes Reborn number one, a preview issue, and I I don't think that these two things are going to tie in. There's a slight chance, I guess. So. But just the the focus on Blade is yeah, really cool. Yeah, Marvel is is uh, they're definitely pointing us more towards Blade yeah. for some reason. Here is the Heroes Reborn I love variant. that one. And I read issue one. This doesn't happen in issue one, but I think it might in issue two. I just like how it's like, in this other universe, no one's going to get me out of the ice. I'll no, just get out myself. Get, yep. mm -hmm. Next up is... Okay, so, Stray Dogs, number three. I won't get into it too deep, um, but... Uh, I have read the last two issues and been thoroughly pleased with how this book has been going because, to begin with, it seemed like a, a kind of weird, kind of goofy concept of, it's, uh, I forgot what they they related to, but I know Scott Snyder has a, uh, a thing on the back that he says it's almost like, uh, does he say, it's like... Disney meets Psycho, and that is such a great thing for this because uh, you've got all these fun pets, all these dogs living in this house, um, trying to solve murders or a a murder that they uh, one of them witnessed, and he told another one, and that one's like, "Hey, wait! I think I remember seeing something like that." Uh, so it mixes that kind of uh, fun, adventuring, talking pets, and then some of the most heart-wrenching, if you love pets, stuff ever with this horrible owner who's gotten all these dogs and they uh, kind of only slightly remember their lives before he had them and uh, they're you know, digging around in the yard trying to find evidence and everything. It's just a great book. Um, way more serious in some parts than you would think and way more fun in parts than than has any right to be but That's stray cool. dogs number three i mean i think this is i still think this has yet to hit its peak of people talking about this one it's such an interesting premise i mean you know it's the beauty of comics uh, just the the breadth of different things yeah. people write about in the comic world i think is better than anywhere yeah more variety than even movies mm -hmm. or or books in my opinion uh, and then we have just one of the funniest Stray Dogs variant covers, which, of course, is Annabelle. Annabelle. But now it's just a silly pug. 
All right, I wanted to talk briefly about this book because, as stated, we like to just sort of mm -hmm. educate our watchers. This is called You Promised Me Darkness. A lot of people are looking for this book right now. It's from Behemoth. This is the only one we got. So I'll just tell you that straight out. Wow. We, we ordered a bunch. We got allocated to one. Now, why is it we, people miss out on stuff like this? Like, we try to keep on top of things, mm -hmm. but the way we order through Diamond, this didn't show up in our system. So that's kind of how we missed it. We put our order in when we finally found out about it, and we just got allocated for one. I have not opened this because it's only one we have, mm -hmm. uh, um, but I have seen some of the art online. The art, it's very sort of uh, old school indie style where everything is just done in blacks and whites, mm -hmm. a lot more blacks though. Like they, they promise you darkness, tons of darkness in this. It's, <laughs> they promise you darkness, they deliver it, darkness. It almost reminds me of old indie titles where you could tell they were using like photocopiers and they were letting the blacks get really, really yeah. dark. That's what the art looks like. So the art I saw looks really cool. Uh, I wish I could tell you more, but we just want you to know about the hot books this week. And if mm -hmm. you can find one at your shop, you might want to grab it if that's your sort of thing. Yeah, and that's from Behemoth. Behemoth, Tom? yeah. So a lot of times those s smaller publishers it has they have a hard time like getting through to where um, stores can see them and everything, and sometimes they don't make it onto Previews World and through Diamonds. Yeah. So, uh, sometimes it's worth doing some deep diving looking for comics. Uh, also came out this week, Amazing Spider-Man number sixty-four. Um, you know, Amazing Spider-Man's been great lately, but I think uh, what's really interesting in this is there is a. Uh, about a two or three page, I wouldn't say backup story, but what you'd kind of think of as like a post credit scene um, that sets up a something pretty big coming up in the future, a big Spider-Man event. Um, there's a character that is in this that I don't want to say they die because it's it's not it, it's not clear what happens to them, but uh, they're face down in a graveyard at the end of it and they're a very big spider-man character so we'll see what happens with that i don't know because it is kind of one of those post credit scenes but uh still very interesting and then there is also the reborn variant which does not feature spider-man at all hyperion hyperion Hyperion's a really big part of heroes reborn yeah with hulk so so i have an incentive i just want to show off really quickly there's a very cool 1 in 25 Perez variant for Spider-Woman this week. We're selling ours for $50. You might want to look for this in, in your local store. They've done a lot of ads for this issue yes. with her upside down. So I have not read the issue yet. I don't know if anything particularly significant happens in it. But it's still a really cool cover. I just thought I'd show off, make people aware of. Yeah, and they're definitely touting this as a new jumping on point, a new kind of refresh start for Spider-Woman. Huh. So that's been a cool. wild series. Very, very wild. <laughs> Every time you picked up, you're like, was it the King and Black issue or something? You had to, you read one of them just to be like, oh, what's going on? You're like, oh my gosh, <laughs> what is, series is crazy. I know. It's like, she's fighting some, she's fighting like some grandma character and <laughs> yeah. they're just going at each other. Uh, last thing I have to show off, this is Geiger number one. Um, this is the glow in the dark variant. So, same with uh, Noctera. A lot of these that have been doing these glow-in-the-dark covers, they're still like considered a first print and everything. It just takes them another week or so to yeah, come out they, with they them. They ship them a little late. Yeah. So, uh, this one is really cool. When the lights go out, it's, uh, you see him in his, his superhero form, with the skull and all. Um, but definitely want to check that one out, especially if you're trying to complete... Geiger's been a huge hit. Yeah. We ordered a lot. We got to read a preview version. We loved it. I ordered a ton. We still ran out. Yeah. I, I've heard stores all over have run out. So you should run out tomorrow, <laughs> try to find this one. First print, it glows in the dark. I mean, how, how much better does it get? Yeah, really, really cool. Okay, so is that it? I think that's it. All right. Whew. So that is our pile show for this week. I have piles of comics over here. You've got several <laughs> piles that are just all over. I have one that's leaning that wants to fall, but I, I have something keeping them from Your, falling. Yours are way neater than mine. I'm, I'm like trying to stack them 
yeah, carefully. Just, just a yeah. lot of books to talk about this week. So thank you all for tuning in and watching, whether you watch us on Facebook or on YouTube, our YouTube channel. We're nearing 800 mm -hmm. subscribers. Maybe this video will do it. If not, I'm sure the next one will. I'm very proud of that. We put a lot of work into the show. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's fun reading comics, but... We do it at like a breakneck speed. Yes. <laughs> uh, while we're at work. Yep. <laughs> Megan's taking care of register. She'll be with us on Friday for Comics from the Future. Yep. Of course. Um, so until then, have a great week. Let us know what you think in the comments. And here are some order details if you'd like to find out about ordering comics through us. Yes.